जय सीताराम रामाय राम भद्राय राम चंद्राय वेद से रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीता पते ए नम बालकांड चैप्टर ट्वेंटी नाइन वामना एंड बली In the previous chapter we saw that after receiving the weapons the lord and lakshmana and vishamitra resumed the journey and the lord sees a very beautiful grove and he wants to know the history of that place in this chapter rama and lakshmana listen to the history of siddhashrama which is the ashrama of sage vishamitra The sage recites to them the history of Vamana and Bali. So let us learn more. Verse one: Atha tasya aprami yasya vachanam pariprachcha ha vishva mitro mahateja vyakhyatum upachakrame. and to him who desired to acquaint himself with the story of the grove as if he were no wiser than any one of us replied vishwamitra of boundless spiritual might verse 2 iha rama mahabaho vishnu deva namaskrita varshani subahuni iha tatha yuga shatani cha तपह चरण योगा उवास सु महातप्यर इट वॉज दैट विष्णु द लॉर्ड ऑफ द यूनिवर्स अबाउट इनविजिबल फॉर एजेस ऑन टोल्ड एंगेज इन लॉन्ग एंड डिफिकल्ट तपस फॉर द गुड ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वर्स थ्री एश पूर्व आश्रमो राम वामन से महात्म सिद्धाश्रम ख्याता सिद्धो अत्र महातप एंड एज वामन हि सैंक्टिफाइड इट विद इज डिवाइन प्रेसेंस सिद्धाश्रम इट इज सो कॉल्ड फॉर इवन ह्यूर द ब्लसड वन अकॉम्प्लिश द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ हिज तपस्या so there are two major reasons why that place is extremely holy number 1 lord narayana conducted his tapasya and number 2 he took the avatar as lord vamana and he protected the world so by taking rama to a place called siddhashrama where he specifically introduces the place as the one where lord vishnu conducted tapasya for the good of the world and where vamana's avatar also took place sage vishamitra is saying this is where lord rama in his previous avatars as narayana and vamana has protected this world and therefore now it is nothing but natural for him to continue to do so so this is one of the first indications where sage vishamitra sort of reveals who the lord is verses 4 and 5 एतस्मिन एव काले तो राजा वैरोच निर्बली निर्जित्य दैवत गणान स इंद्रान स मरुदगणान कारयामास तज्यम त्रिशलोकेश विश्रुत It was about that time Bali the son of Virochana routed the celestial hosts and held undisputed sway over the three worlds verse 6 yagnim chakara su mahan asurendro mahabalah balah tu yajmanasya deva sagni purogama samagamya svayam chaiva vishnum uchhu ih ashrame he commenced a grand sacrificial rite when agni and the other gods came to vishnu here and said verse 7 bali vairochani vishnu yajate yagnam uttamam asamapta vrate tasmin svakaryam abhipadyatam bali the son of virochana is even now performing a grand sacrifice and before it is over you should see that we accomplish our object verse 8 
ये च एनम अभिवर्तन ते याचितार इतः तथा यच्च यत्र यथावच्च सर्वम ते भ्या प्रयच्छति he makes it a point to refuse nothing to anyone who may ask him for it it matters not who or what verse 9 सत्वम सुराह्यथार्थाय माया योगम उपाश्रितः वामनत्वम गतो विष्णु कुरु कल्याणम उत्तमम फॉर आवर सेक कॉल इन दाय इनस्क्रूटेबल पावर ऑफ इल्यूजन टू दाय एड अस्यूम द फॉर्म ऑफ अ ड्वार्फ एंड सीक द सॉवरेंटी ऑफ द थ्री वर्ल्ड्स एट हिज हैंड्स एज अ गिफ्ट एंड ब्रिंग पीस एंड हैप्पीनेस टू द टॉर्चर्ड हार्ट्स ऑफ ऑल नो वी हैव गॉट टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाई इज इट दैट द देवताज वर वेरी अफ्रेड ऑफ बलि महाराज and even though this is not very clearly explained in valmiki ramayana shrimad bhagavatam explores this in great detail in the 8th canto 15th chapter the summary is as follows maharaja parikshit wanted to understand how lord vamana deva on the plea of taking 3 paces of land from bali maharaja took everything away from him and arrested him Shukadeva Goswami responded to this inquiry with the following explanation In the fight between the demons and the demigods as described in the 11th chapter of the canto Bali was defeated and he died in the fight but by the grace of Shukracharya he regained his life Thus he engaged himself in the service of Shukracharya his spiritual master The descendants of Bhrigu being pleased with him engaged him in the Vishwajit yagna when this yagna was performed from the fire of yagna came a chariot horses a flag a bow armor and two quivers of arrows Prah- Maharaja Prahlad Bali Maharaja's grandfather gave Bali an eternal garland of flowers and Shukracharya gave him a conch shell Bali Maharaja after offering obeisances to Prahlad the Brahmanas and his spiritual master Shukracharya equipped himself to fight with Indra and went to Indrapuri with his soldiers blowing his conch shell he attacked the outskirts of Indra's kingdom when Indra saw Bali Maharaja's prowess he went to his own spiritual master Brahaspati told him about Bali's strength and inquired about his duty Brahaspati informed the demigods that because Bali had been endowed with extraordinary power by the brahmanas the demigods could not fight with him their only hope was to gain the favor of the supreme personality of godhead indeed there was no alternative under the circumstances brahaspati advised the demigods to leave the heavenly planets and keep themselves somewhere invisible The demigods followed his orders and Bali Maharaja along with his associates gained the entire kingdom of Indra. The descendants of Rigmuni being very affectionate to their disciple Bali Maharaja engaged him in performing 100 Ashwamedha yagnas. In this way Bali Maharaja enjoyed the opulences of the heavenly planets. So this is why the devatas were very afraid of Bali Maharaj. We also know that the devatas were the sons of Aditi and Kashyapa Muni. So the fact that her sons were not in the proper realm anymore obviously affected mother Aditi. So We are going to see in the 16th chapter of the 8th canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam the effect that Bali Maharaj's actions have on Aditi and Kashyapa. The summary is as follows. As described in this chapter because Aditi the mother of the demigods was very afflicted her husband Kashyapa Muni told her how to observe vows and austerities for the benefit of her sons. Since the demigods were not visible in the heavenly kingdom their mother Aditi because of separation from them was very much aggrieved one day after many many years the great kashyapa emerged from a trance of meditation and returned to his ashram 
He saw that the ashrama was no longer beautiful and that his wife was very morose. Everywhere in the ashrama he saw signs of lamentation. The great sage therefore inquired from his wife about the well-being of the ashrama and asked her why she looked so morose. After Aditi informed Kashyapa Muni about the ashrama's well-being, she told him that she was lamenting for the absence of her sons. She then requested him to tell her how her sons could return and reoccupy the positions. She wanted all good fortune for her sons. Moved by Aditi's request, Kashyapa Muni instructed her in the philosophy of self-realization, the difference between matter and spirit, and how to be unaffected by material laws. But when he saw that Aditi was not satisfied even after he had given these instructions, he advised her to worship Vasudeva Janardana. He assured her that only Lord Vasudeva could satisfy her and fulfill all her desires. When Aditi then expressed her desire to worship Lord Vasudeva, Prajapati Kashyapa told her about a process of worship known as Payovrata which is executed in 12 days. Lord Brahma had instructed him how to satisfy Lord Krishna by this process and thus he advised his wife to observe this vow and its regulative principles. Now that we know the background, let us continue with the story as mentioned by Sage Vishwamitra. Verses 10 and 11 Etasmin anantare rama kashyapu agni samah prabha aditya sahita rama dipyamana iva ojasa devi sahayo bhagavan divyam varsha sahasrakam vratam samapya varadam tushtava madhusudanam it chanced that about the same time, Kashyapa, the patriarch, and his wife Aditi carried on a long and severe course of austerities and won the grace of the Lord. Even as the noonday sun, or like the blazing fire, shone he in his spiritual glory. Vishnu came down to where he was and spoke to him in sweet and kindly accents. Son, mightly pleased am I with your tapas. Ask of me what thou wilt, and it is yours. Verse 12 Tapo mayam tapo rashim, tapo murtim tapatmakam, tapasatvam sutaptena pashyami purushottamam. With noble hymns did Kashipa praise the giver of all good. O Supreme One, my long and difficult vow has indeed borne fruit in that I have been blessed with the sight of thy blessed presence. Thou art tapas in thy essence. Thou art the embodiment of tapas. Thou art the sum total of all tapas. And thou art the innermost soul of every kind of tapas. So, Kashipa says that Lord Vishnu is tapo mayam. Tapo Rashim, Tapo Murtim, and Tapatmakam. Tapo Mayam means he is abounding in asceticism. Tapasya is his essence. Next is Tapo Rashim. Tapo Rashim means he is the aggregate of all asceticism. That is, he is the sum total of all tapas. The third definition is Tapo Murtim. That means that he is the embodiment of all tapasya. And the fourth is tapatmakam. Atmakam means he is the soul of all tapasya. And then Kashipa calls him as Purushottamam, the best, the supreme personality of Godhead. And he says that due to his tapasya, he is able to see the Lord. Pashyami means to see. And he is able to see the Lord only due to his sincere austerities that he has conducted with his wife for a very long time. Verse 13. Sharire tava pashyami jagat sarvam idam prabho tvam anadih anirdeshya tvam aham sharanam gataha. 
The whole universe do I see in thy resplendent form. Thou hast no beginning, and thy nature is beyond the ken of any man or God. O Lord of the universe, I take my refuge in thee and thy boundless mercy. Sage Kashipa continues, Sharire tava pashyami jagat sarvam idam prabho. O Prabhu, O Lord, O the Master, Pashyami, I am able to see Jagat Sarvam, the entire universe, in Sharire Tava, in your body. Tava means yours and Sharira means body. So in your body, I am able to see this entire universe. Tvam Anadi, that means that you are without any beginning. And you are anardeshya. That means that you are not definable. Your nature is beyond the imagination of anyone. And tvam aham sharanam gataha. I am taking shelter in you. Tvam in you aham. I sharanam. I am taking your shelter. We will continue an exploration of the conversations between the Lord and Kashyapa Muni and Aditi Mother in the next section. Jai Sitaram.